I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. I have oh, given yeah. you like a little introdu introduction, but not not a Absolutely. proper one. <laughs> I'm just starting to choke up it. <laughs> right. Uh, so, hello everyone. How you all doing? Uh, my name is James Alexander, and I am a voice actor. And now, I suppose you could call me a streamer as well. But uh, I am the voice actor for the Zealot Judge, the one who sounds like this and screams at everyone at the time. That is me in Dark Tide, so if you hate his voice, deal with it. If you love his voice, I love you. Either way, it's an absolute pleasure to be here, and thank you so much for uh, supporting Dark Tide. It's, it's lovely. Thank you. But yeah, no, thank you very much for um, actually mate, playing, no, playing, with, sorry, playing with the community. You know? No, mate, being part of the community is what it's all about, man. I, um, I've, I've actually loved it. It's great just getting stuck in with everyone. So I know this is going to be biased for you. Okay, let's hear it. Let's but hear it. What is your favorite class? To play and i know this is gonna be i know this is gonna be biased but uh why you gotta ask me these questions <laughs> for live on stream man uh right let me think first things first i am enjoying playing as a zealot because i like getting stuck in yeah <laughs> but yeah. i'm really enjoying playing as an ogryn ogryn is a lot of fun I'm just figuring out what the best loadout is for me if that makes sense <laughs> bias class zealot Non-biased class, Ogryn. <laughs> <laughs> I've not had a lot of people say that they're really liking um, Ogryn. That's really cool. I started off on the Zealot just because I'm like, I'm like, I like pressing W and just going in. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do that on every game I play, and I'm just like, yep, get in there, get in there. I did it on like Overwatch. I did do 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 it on a uh, New World whenever I play Tank in New World, and um, yeah, I like pressing just just W, go in and and kill things. Yeah, I like um, to get stuck in. I got yeah, stuck. so so the Zealot's been. <laughs> been my sort of favorite closely followed by psyka it's still a zealot that's out you know winning it i mean you get a flamethrower oh yeah so yeah, exactly what else do you need <laughs> right then uh any preference for difficulty or are we just gonna um i will play anything fantastic i like to stick to level three to keep it nice and neat and then then go into the dangerous areas yet to win a four or five yeah i will say we can work on that today if you want one don't tempt me <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> Is it weird playing a game with your voice in it? <laughs> like absolutely, it's <laughs> yeah. so weird. Like, like hearing my character go like that. It's, it's so weird. That it's actually me doing it. Yeah. Like, but it's mad. But it's it's. I mean, it's it's incredibly incredibly cool. Oh but yeah, it's definitely. Still so so weird. I guess it's got probably a thing as well of like, do I pick this voice because it's me? I picked the zealot as my own voice because I just wanted to. I wanted to just hear how it come out, you mm -hmm. know, ultimately in the game. But no, I'm very happy with the character, and I'm glad people are enjoying his holy rage. So oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I am happy. Oh no, that, that's, that's fantastic. How are you finding it? I'm, I'm enjoying it. As I say, I sort of have a... I say I have a problem. I was obsessed with Destiny 2 for a bit, and I was waiting for Witch Queen to come out, and then when Witch Queen dropped, I just didn't play the game. I played like an hour of the the thing that I had paid like £80 for and then just, just, <laughs> just didn't touch it. So like, I've been waiting for this game for like two years. Vermintide 2, I've got like 2,000 hours in Vermintide 2. It's incredible. Absolutely like, love that game. Um, and obviously this was like the next one. So I was like, oh, I can't wait. I love this game. Don't get me wrong. I love the game. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's been struggling to pull me in as much as like other games or as much as I want. Yeah. And I don't know if that's because I've overhyped it in my head. And, Potentially, and, yeah, and therefore it's just obviously now nothing can live up to it or what. Sorry, I just um, wanted to add as well. So like in Vermintide, I was doing a lot of the modded difficulties and stuff. This is a completely different game. Yeah, of course. And obviously a lot of people are sort of comparing it, saying like, well, Vermintide did it better. And I do believe that people are looking back with uh, rose tinted glasses, not so much remembering some of the um, the bugs and stuff that were in Vermintide. Yeah, because you know? that's course. part of game development. Probably about six months ago, I played it for the first time. Oh, yeah. So at, at that point, it had been refined. You could yeah, say. definitely. But as I say, they're, they're a small company as well. So it's not like they've just got, you know, bottomless pockets to fund things. When you, you know, when you were recording for your yes. voiceover. Did of you actually, not. did you get to meet the other people? Because obviously I presume they did it at different times. Uh, and, yes. And... So I never recorded uh, a session with another actor on mm -hmm. Dark Side. I was with pretty much the entire time with Matt Ward, one of the writers. I was with obviously the sound engineers and I had like a, a sound person from Fat Shark as well also on the, the, the session. Yeah, I, I met the actors more like outside of the sessions, like when we were um, kind of like waiting to go into the next one. Yeah, you know, so like I've I've met uh, the voice actor for the brawler Tom Dusik. I've met uh, Tashinga, the voice of the uh, Psycho Savant. Alex Jordan, the voiceover for Dark Tide was recorded at two separate uh, studios. 
I've only met the other actors from like like Greg Jones, the bully and loner psyker from just kind of bumping into them on other projects, you know. I've met about seven of the cast so far, but not not once worked with them physically in the studio, but yeah. occasionally get lines played to me. How long did it take you to do those voice lines? When we do sessions for Dark Tide, it's about an hour to two hours, no longer than that. Hmm. And depending on the intensity, it depends where we go from there. The last session I did was about two hours. I was more or less doing a session like once a week from about the end of January to about mid-September. That's an hour and an average of about 100 lines per hour. Wow, that's there's a really good few lines there. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, a, good there's, a, good, there's a good, there's a fair bit of a fair bit of work that goes goes into it. That's um, that's crazy. Wow. I heard you talking about you being uh, or getting into the the space of being a sort of voice actor. So, what was it like? Was that sort of one of your first bigger projects, or was it? Yeah, Dark Tide, the first big project in terms of like being recognisable and also more than substantial role. And by substantial, I mean more than just one hour of recording. It was the Formula One games first? I did Formula One 2021, and then that kind of led to me getting an agent, and then the opportunity for Dark Tide come about two months after that. And obviously, I didn't know it was Dark Side when I recorded for it. I knew it was a Warhammer project, but I didn't know mm -hmm. that it was Dark Side. We With uh, Dark Side, I did the audition. So I auditioned for an Ogryn, a, a Cutthroat Guardsman, and the Judge, respectively. Mm -hmm. So we did one session, and then I got called back for the second audition for the Judge, which was exciting. And they kind of developed the voice from what it was in the audition to something a bit more angry, so to speak. I think it works, though. As soon as I heard it, before I even knew that you did it, when I played the beta, I, yeah. I picked this voice. And then I remember um, Ayo Adrian, um, oh, who, yeah, Adrian who told me it was you. And I was like, I was like, oh, that's so cool. And, and Adrian said, yeah, like he spoke to you a few times, you know. I was like, oh, that's sick. And then I sort of, yeah, just, you know, reached out to you as well. Sort no, of thing. Matt, yeah, well, uh, I'm always happy to chat. That's the thing, because I know some people are like, oh, I don't know whether I should, you know. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm guilty of being that as well. Like in no, that. it's understandable because it, um, it can sometimes go badly for you, and yeah. the person's like, "Don't speak to me, peasant." Yeah, you know. How but, dare uh, you? <laughs> <laughs> but now I, I love chatting the community. At the end of the day, like the community is what pretty much makes the game in terms of mm -hmm. its successes after it comes out. You know, so definitely. And the least least I can do is show support for the people who have shown me support. You know, while it's been developed and such, because like I know not everyone likes to judge, and that's okay. That is natural. Different strokes for different folks, exactly. we say here. Exactly, exactly. I was into Dark Side, should I say. I was looking forward to Dark Side before I was a part of it. Like, mm -hmm. I was hyped for it for a good yeah. few years before. I was like, Vermin Tide in Warhammer 40k, love it. Then it happened. I guess somehow I got part of it, and I was like, oh I, my god. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a oh big part god. of it. You're a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, 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 that's the weird thing. It's like a substantial role in the game. Because, <laughs> like, when I got cast for it, on the sheet, it just says Zealot C. And when you see like a letter after a, a character's name, you're like, well, it's probably just like a, a boss or something, you know, like a, there's three chaos zealots you gotta fight and you're the voice of one. And when I go in, they're like, so uh, you're one of the playable characters. I was like, uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. The excitement from it still hasn't gone. Like it's still yeah. surreal. It's it's mad, but I'm I'm absolutely humbled to be part of it because being in a Warhammer game, yeah, you know, let alone a game of this magnitude, is just yeah, it's, it's perfect. It's, it's just I'm, I'm so incredibly lucky. I was actually sent something interesting before I came on here that was uh, talking about Henry Cavill mentioned about a yes. Warhammer sort of film or series or something. I don't know exactly what it was, and obviously it's very early stage. But I was like, yo, that's kind of that's kind of cool because obviously. I know that Cavill's a massive fan of Warhammer. Massively, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it'll be it'll be awesome. And I kind of have a slight massive man crush on it's Cavill. It's okay. It's okay <laughs> to say that man. He's, yeah. he's, he's oh no, one hundred percent, dude. He's certainly a specimen. <laughs> no, no, definitely, definitely. Um, so I'm not I'm not afraid to admit that. You know, people in chat now is like we all do. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all love a bit of Henry Cavill, don't we, chat? Oh yes. So I've got this thing. So I, I like. I say ADHD and stuff and bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. But you know when I hear an accent, I kind of have to try and do it. And obviously, I've offended a few people <laughs> in Mate, the past when I, I hear an accent. The same thing. Mm. As soon as I hear an accent, my body, my brain's like, "That's your new accent now." Yeah. I'm like, "No, no, it's not." <laughs> no, no, it's really, not. Really, really. And obviously, the majority of people are like, "It's a laugh." I've got uh, one of my mods is Mexican, and he always he he always oh, does a um, an English accent, and oh, it's hilarious because it's terrible, but it's oh. it's funny because it's terrible. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And and yeah. like. I love it. 
But then it's weird how, like, I think the other way around. I'm like, no, I'll just offend people if I try and do it myself. Because obviously, I'm it not... how bad it is, you know? It <laughs> yeah. <depends> how bad <laughs> it is. How did it start with you? Obviously, because I'm not, not so much doing, um, like, impersonating and stuff like that. But I've, yeah. I've heard you do a few. So things I like Smeagol and... Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> things like that. But obviously, it's amazing how people are like, oh, my God, that voice is amazing. But when you try and do it yourself, it's kind of fairly easy. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's the vocal cord. Like, everyone's vocal cords are unique and uh, have access to doing voices that other people can't. Some people just have a natural ability to mimic. Yeah, I can do like some impressions, but I wouldn't class myself as an impressionist. You know, like mm -hmm. it's recently I've started doing a I say an impression like of uh, the professional. You know, the uh, welcome to the squad, soldier. Yeah. That, oh yeah. Uh, the uh, Alex. Yeah, I've been, I've, Alex been, yeah, I've, been Alex, I've been doing Alex's voice. Yeah. Every now and again. I don't know if What's you like a frogging psyker? Yeah. <laughs> we always stuff. die with frogging psychers all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, like that voice. Being able to change, swap between voices, because, I mean, we've seen things like um, Seth MacFarlane doing voices from Family yeah. Guy, and he can just Absolutely, change, like, yeah. through a... He's so versatile with whatever he can do. Obviously, in your situation, I, I guess it would be good for you to be similar, be able yeah. to swap just between voices and change it, because it, it's a weird thing. You Until I sort of saw films and games and stuff, I never actually paid much attention to how I sound. And especially yeah, yeah, when I started streaming, because obviously I did the normal thing of, oh, I sound horrible. Yeah, it happens to everyone. That does. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, does that go away at all? Or is it still just like... You have to accept your voice. Mm. That, that, that's what it is. It's I've kind of had to be like, right. Because what the one thing when I first started voice acting was I need to learn to essentially act with my own voice. You know, stop, stop mm -hmm. always putting a voice on. Just sometimes maybe your, my own voice is enough, you know? I just took some time to basically just spend some time with my own voice recording stuff and being like, right, what works, what doesn't work, you know? It takes time, don't get me wrong, but it, it's just like with anything, because I always say it's about practicing. Practicing's yeah. all the, you can the P's. do, you know? Uh, oh yeah, yeah we, the, we, we went the through the P's, P's, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, patience, professionalism, and practice. <laughs> yes, and some other P's which I won't go into again. Um, <laughs> that, that we added in last time. Like, I haven't had a chance to personally talk to to Alex, but but discussing thing in his chat with him, I say he he said the very much the same thing that you said. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was about sort of him getting comfortable with with himself yeah. and, and yeah, just sort of. Um, I don't know. A big part of accepting yourself as well. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like a it's kind of I'm like a journey. A, a self, yeah, it is. Every, um, like it, it is like the actor's journey because like everyone goes about their career completely differently. You know, like mm -hmm. everyone has different opportunities come their way. Everyone gets into things differently. You know, like people start early and others. Some people start really late. It's it's completely dependent on. It's just it's just weird. Like, is it all chance? You know, it's, it's got to be some like obviously dare I say it, some talent involved in it. But it's a hundred percent. But it's also like. There's definitely chance and opportunity there as well. Networking is a vast yeah, it, web of intrigue. I think I think a lot of people say things like, oh, they're just so talented, they're really lucky. And I think that downplays it a lot for the hard work that has to go into it. Because obviously, yes, some people might get the opportunities, but you can't. I, I mean, it takes confidence to, to actually grab those opportunities and, and run with it. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, and actually mate, yeah. Do some work at the right time kind of thing. Yeah. Now, this is really controversial if you don't want to answer. How do you feel? I think that games and law should be very loosely connected. It's kind of like, it depends on like, Dark Tide isn't a massively story-driven game. Why get so angry about it? Like, I'm all about love, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm all about like, just, just let's play games, you know what I mean? Like, you game for whatever reason you game for. To me, it's chilling out, making friends, having a laugh. I don't see Absolutely. the point in arguing over games. But again, it's, it's sort of hard for me because in my brain, I'm like, I love the passion. Like, I love it when somebody's yeah. really enjoying something that much. And obviously learning about, because like my introduction to Warhammer was Vermintide. And then I sort of started learning a tiny bit about fantasy. And then it was like, ooh, Darktide. So then I sort of started trying to pick things out for from 40k. And I've had a lot of people try, sort of try and help me. But I'm very slow at picking things up. So like even to learn a tiny bit of Warcraft knowledge um, took me probably about six years of playing it and then of reading books or like listening to books and stuff it's like i'm very slow at picking things up and actually you know memorizing things i know nothing about 40k really i just think it's a really cool place to be a part of and i think yeah, yeah a game again i tried a couple of games for, from 40k and never clicked with them and then yeah for me this was more about the you know getting into this game is more about the gameplay rather than the story but yeah like me personally i feel like some things that work in law might not work in a game the stuff 
You yeah, know? the stuff that, that because I know that the law of Warhammer is so vast that like color of a knee on a, a space marine's armor being on the other knee, like anti-law kind of statement. Not on purpose, obviously, but <laughs> it's it's difficult. Somebody told me to not sell myself short because I know I know that forty k stands for forty thousand. No, it doesn't, mate. <laughs> it, it doesn't. I was like, oh, so it's just forty thousand years after Warhammer Fantasy, then? Yeah, I think it's just. And then, just but then I got told it, off. You know? And then, oh yeah, that does that. You lose the fun of it when you get told off. Yeah. Don't you? And then I was like, I was like, well, I mean, I don't know, because obviously to me, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Is it is it worth getting angry about it? You know, like because there's so much to enjoy. Stupid, exactly. About law and the fact that we have this rich fictional universe and tale stories events at our disposal to enjoy. It's it's easy to get buried in it, but just enjoy it because we are so privileged to have so many amazing created universes from mm. these brilliant minds and it's not obviously made by one person is it you know what i mean like the the, the books yeah, are wrote by many different people and it's great because that's people's interpretation in interpretation sorry of maybe a previous piece of literature you know what i mean that's come before um and it's it's sort of really nice i was never sort of into books and even stories when i was growing up i sort of recent i say recently a few years ago now you know this is a really good story and i don't read very well but i've listened to a lot of audiobooks and and stuff like that now so sort of getting into like a good story i will probably say that i actually prefer them over films now whereas i never used to i, I never used to enjoy enjoy books at all so it's sort of nice because to me it's sort of a as i say somebody's interpretation and it's left to you to interpret it for yourself as well which is sort of like a really exciting thing as uh, um, as well which i never sort of experienced with you know yeah. main, mainly just watching film you know so obviously the, the the key one was lord of the ring that was kind of i say ruined because i watched the film first before i read the book me um, too mate me um, too <laughs> i had that image in my head whereas i don't know the likes of harry potter I actually read for, well, listened to the last couple of books, I think it was, before I saw the films. And then I was like, ooh, and I'm a massive Harry Potter fan. Like, I, I love Harry Potter. That was sort of ruined for me a bit, and I feel like I would have interpreted it differently if I had sort of just read the thing first and, and was able to imagine it myself, you know? I think I think that would be sort of, that's what's really good about um, just, just books, you know what I mean?